Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. It's about that time. Let's go take that walk and see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Boy, I hope this is going to be a treat. This is Curly Wolf. Curly Wolf 100% barrel aged, brewed and bottled at Barrel House Brewing Company. They're out of Paso Robles, California. This is a maple vanilla imperial stout coming in at 9.4% alcohol by volume. And this was sent to me by Ruben. So Ruben, Thank you, brother, for sending me the beers you sent. I uh, couldn't wait once I read this one. I got it out of the beer mail package. So I said, man, that sounds awesome. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, bourbon barrel beers. And uh, a maple vanilla imperial stout. Uh, barrel aged. It does say bourbon on there, but it's barrel aged. So that's the next best thing. We should, we should get without the vanilla being added to it, uh, a lot of times when it goes into a barrel that hasn't had bourbon or anything, just a regular oak barrel, you'll get some woodiness and some vanilla from the oak a lot of times. So whether a vanilla was added or not, we'll, we'll see here in just a minute. Commercial description, uh, I don't have the IBUs listed here on this one, guys. Uh, let's see if it says over here. It's got an IBU. It says 58 here on right there. It says this creamy and complex stout was aged in 11 oh, was aged in 11 year old bourbon barrels for six months. So it was aged in bourbon barrels until the time was just right. We added maple syrup to the bowl and whole vanilla beans into the whiskey barrels. As it, add, as it aged to add sweetness and complexity. This beer is 100% barrel aged and 100% delicious. And it's not a blended beer. A lot of times they'll do a barrel aged beer and they'll blend a newer beer with the barrel aged uh, uh, to stretch the, the, bourbon alver, the bourbon barrel version. But they say it, it blends it and it, it makes a nice smell on us. But I'll, I'm old school. I like that 100% bourbon barrel aged beer. Let me have, give me the full strength bourbon. Don't blend it with a newer version that hadn't been in a, in a barrel. That's just me though. That's just me. I don't drink bourbon anymore, so I get all my bourbon from bourbon barrel aged beers. So I'm looking forward to this. This this should be a tasty treat. And I don't recall ever having anything from Barrel House Brewing. So Ruben, uh, I don't know. Uh, if this is uh, one of your regular go-to beers or not, but I do appreciate you sending it to me. Uh, it sounds awesome on the label here with the maple syrup and the vanilla beans during the dry hopping. So, pretty impressive uh, ingredients as far as I'm concerned. Uh, food pranks for this beer, guys, is going to be, and it's considered an American or imper uh, double or an imperial style. And since it is a stout, it goes well through chocolate dishes, of course. Cheese of butter, green, good, Havarti Swiss. And the meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass for a pint, back and on it. Tumbler, snifter, oversized wine glass. I brought out the double glass for this one today. And it says it can be cellared for long periods. I would think now, whether the vanilla or the maple syrup may fade, I'm not exactly sure with that. But most of your bourbon barrel imperial stouts will keep for a long, long time. Especially this one being 9.4%, technically, ABV-wise, it should keep for 10, 15, even 20 years. But I don't know. 
know if the maple uh, syrup tastes or the vanilla would fade over that length of time. So let's drink it fresh. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's get the cap off this puppy. This is a bomber, it's a 22 ouncer. Nice cap. I'm gonna to try to save this and get it on the fridge downstairs. Nice little hiss. Ooh, I'm smelling the bourbon already. I like it. 9.4%. Let's generate just a little bit ahead if we can. Yeah, maybe just a little. Just a little bit more. Oh yeah, I'm getting the bourbon from here. Alright. About a finger of head. Over to the light. Uh, this particular glass, I'm not seeing a whole lot. Now if I was pouring it in the other sovereign beer glass, I might get a little red ruby tinges on the bottom here, but this particular glass, it looks pretty black. There might be some red rubiness around the outside. Not showing in this glass, though. So. Good looking beer, though. Nice, frothy, khaki colored head. Let's get a nose on it. Oh, the bourbon. Got a very sweet back end to it. Slight hint of the alcohol in the nose. And that may subside a little bit as it warmed up to room temperature. Maybe it's just around there where y'all can see it. It's got the IBUs listed right here on the bottle on the back. IBUs 58, ABV is 9.4. It's got the gravity listed there. Like I said, I don't know if it's got a date on it anymore. We'll take a closer look. Not that critical, but just for our information, I would like to know what the vintage is, whether it was done 2015 or 2014 or 2013, or a, a month and a year. Uh, if it was done in 2015, was it January 2015? Was it December of 2015 or, or 14? Just to give you an idea, uh, if they do it more than once a year, or if it's a one-time only. According to these guys, it, it says availability is summer. So. I drink these kind of beers all year round, but a lot of people don't drink these heavy imperial styles unless it's kind of chilly outside. I'm not one of those guys. I love these beers in the summertime. Not my first choice for the first beer of the day, but I usually would like to finish up with a nice porter or a stout to finish up the evening. Well, the head has dissipated while I was flapping my yapper. Let's, uh, let's see what it brings. I've got a really nice bourbon. I'm getting a little bit of coconut and vanilla. Maybe we'll get some dark fruit and coffee and cocoa and all that. Cheers everybody. Cheers ribbon. Thank you brother. Vanilla is there. A little bit of the alcohol in this one though. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not extremely hidden. I swear I'm getting some coconut to go along with that. There's no coconut in it. It's probably coming from the oak barrels of vanilla, letting me a little bit of coconut on that. A little bit of coffee. The cocoa is there. Chocolate. Maybe slight hint of some dark fruit, but that may come out a little more than it warms up. So let's, let's, let's do that. Let's let it warm up a little bit. Let me step on it in about 35, 45 minutes. My fire up a stogie to go with this. and. Uh, We'll come back and see where this one ends up. I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. I've got a little bit left here. I've been sitting on it probably about 35, 45 minutes or so. Very tasty. Uh, the only drawback to this beer is it has no kind of vintage on it at all. Uh, and it's a silk screen bottle. Uh, and according to what Beer Advocate says here, Curly Wolf Maple Vanilla Imperial Stout Maple Vanilla Bourbon Unfiltered introducing the first beer to be released in their re Servado de Robles series. The oak aged 
limited release series. Limited release, just remember that. In the can is the canvas for our beer artists. Creamy and complex, this Russian Imperial Stout was aged 11 year old bourbon barrels for six months until the time was just right. We then added fresh uh, maple to the bowl and the whole vanilla beans in the barrels to age. So that tells me limited release. It was only available uh, tap room, limited release tap room select draft accounts and 22 ounce bottles. So it's a limited release version. Why, does, why is there no vintage on it? I don't understand that. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me guys. They would do a limited release bottle in the 22 ounce and not have a vintage on it somewhere. This is a 2013, 2014, 2015 edition. So going to cost them a grade point on that. It is a tasty beer. It's a shame that these guys don't realize how important it is that we know what vintage it is. Maybe we want to do last year's edition or this year's or even next year's edition and know uh, uh, what vintage we're drinking. I'll check. The bourbon is there. It's very well made beer. There is some alcohol there. It's not completely hidden. I'm getting the cocoa. I'm getting just a slight hint of some coffee and some dark fruit. The vanilla is definitely there. I'm getting a little bit of coconut in there too. Very nice beer. It's just a shame that they find it's not important enough to uh, put a vintage on it. But like I said, it's not going to hurt the beer because this beer will sell it for a long time. But as as beer buyers, connoisseurs, or, 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 or just beer drinkers, craft beer drinkers, we would like to know that because uh, they're probably going to do it again, I would think, and they may have done it before. I've not had anything from these guys before, so Ruben, thanks again, brother, for sending it to me. But I do think these guys should put some kind of vintage on their bottle, especially if it's a limited release and it's all silk screened on the bottle. There's no label. Uh, it's, it may be a done once beer or so. And, and if it was a 12 ounce bottle, they may be dating the six pack or the case or something like that. But nobody I know buys bombers by the case if they're dating the case. So that makes absolutely no sense. That's, you might as well date the truck that's delivering it. I mean, that, that's the same difference as far as I'm concerned. So it needs to be on the bottle, guys. Uh, it's very tasty. I, I, I personally think it's an A beer, but it's in a B bottle. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave you guys. I know you know, a lot of y'all uh, get sick of me hearing about the dating, but that's my soapbox to stand on, and I'm going to keep standing on it and shouting it out until we get every one of these guys to uh, date to date your stuff. At least on this style of beer, putting at least a year at the very minimum and a month in a, in a year would be nice. We don't need a day, but a month in a year or just a year would help. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to give it to seven, which is a B plus. I think it's, uh, if it had some kind of vintage on it, I would probably go ahead and give it to 8, but it does not. So it gets to 7. Uh, over to uh, Beer Advocate, they say 88 in a very good range. And over to Rate Beer, they say 82 and 24 in the style. So uh, if I was spending a numeric rating on this, it would probably be pretty close to what Beer Advocate had. I, I would probably give it an 88 or 89. That's where I would put it. So uh, very tasty, though. Very well made, but the alcohol is not hidden very well. Uh, they are, even if it's warmed up, I am getting the alcohol notes. So, uh, But it is tasty. I enjoyed this. Uh, Ruben, thanks again, brother, for sending it to me. Very tasty beer. Uh, not had anything else from these guys as far as I can recollect. So, uh, don't know what else they do, but uh, hopefully they're dating that. The, if they're doing IPAs or low ABV beers, they're dating that. So, I'm not sure. So, Ruben, you might have more information about this beer company, uh, this brewery, uh, if they're dating anything at all, but I don't see anything on this bottle. So, if you've had this one from Barrel House Brewing, uh, this is their Curly Wolf, which is a uh, Imperial Stout bourbon barrel aged for six months in that barrel. Very tasty. I enjoyed it. So, if you've had it, let me know what you think of it, guys. And let's see what we can dig out of that fridge tomorrow. See you then.